All right, good morning, cadets. We're going to try to make this work between the face-to-face um, -face instruction as well as the online portion. We're going to do live recording, and we'll post this later. Let's go ahead and jump to the presentation here initially. Maybe. Okay. And there we go. So first question, how will JRTC help me become a better citizen? Share some quick thoughts. Get out a piece of paper and pencil and you can write down some thoughts real quick. Just a essential question and quick write. Go. There's a paper back there on my desk if you need it. Keep going, Dakota. Brought to make you better citizen because they will help you learn how to respect and okay, respect one of the values. And, and um, they also help you to like help like help around people in need. And okay, so service to others. That's another one of one of those values that we would talk about. Okay, so you know a little bit about JRTC already. All right. So what other things do you already know about JRTC? Rainy? What do people do in JRTC? Have you seen it at parades? You've seen cadets at parades, okay. What else? What's that? Okay, it does promote young Americans who want to help the country. So um, while in JRTC you're certainly not required to go into military service, uh, for those that do choose to go that route, because keep in mind only, uh, what, 26% 20, of High school graduates are even eligible for military service, and of that, less than 1% actually put on a uniform. So for most folks, just you know, being in JRTC classes, um, probably as close as they're ever gonna get to actually joining the military. Uh, but it, And that's not really what the intent is. The intent is to motivate young people to become better citizens. Uh, therefore, it's, um, it's more of an appreciation of some of the values, the idea of service to nation, service to community, service to others, that we are able to implement that here right within our communities w without ever doing that. Um, so again, it's just a, a mechanism and, and our focus is on, on what? It, it's team building, uh, development of leadership skills, and a lot really is on service. Service to school, service to community, service to nation. Okay? Where'd my cursor go? There we go. Okay. So one of the outcomes of the Army JRTC program is to get young people to join the Army after they have completed high school. True or false? false. That is false, like we just said. Um, while there is a benefit for those that do choose to go that route, you are certainly not expected to do that. So that is false. Okay? Uh, here's some of the things we'll go through in the lesson today and tomorrow. Uh, talk through a few things, and we'll, we'll have a an assessment task, a sheet that we'll go through uh, tomorrow uh, or possibly not till Friday for that. Some of our learning objectives, origins, JRTC. Talk about what you can do as a cadet, uh, but again, one of the newer changes is that you can be simply a participating student for your entire first year uh, where you do not wear the uniform, uh, and that's particularly useful with um, coronavirus right now because I'm not sure how to get folks that are doing the online portion 
how to get uniforms to them yet. Uh, we may be able to work something out in the future, but right now the uniforms will only be going to those in the classroom who do want to become full-blown cadets. Uh, so we'll talk about what is the difference between cadet participating student. Uh, talk about some of the outcomes. Mission, again, we already said the mission. What was the mission of JRTC? Motivate young people to become better citizens. Good. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the JRTC cadet creed. That's something we normally start the class off in the morning is stating that creed. So what goes into it? What does it really mean? Why, why is that important to us? Uh, go over some of the core curriculum and identify some key words. Okay, uh, we're going to skip introductions for now since uh, that's, you know, we did some of that last week for those that are in the classroom. For those that are at home, um, that's, that's going to be difficult to do since we're asynchronous. Okay. Think about what else you'll, you'll do in JRTC. We already talked about some of those things. Um, if you look at the picture up there on the right, we do have um, some resources are sent to us. Why is it doing this? All right. That's problematic. All right. Okay. There we go. Um, love technology. <laughs> um, Staff Sergeant Von Hofen is Pennsylvania Army National Guard. He's the local recruiter. He actually graduated right here from Valley High School. Um, he's going to be coming in sometime next week, either Tuesday or Wednesday, with a climbing wall. So they'll set up in the parking lot, and uh, we'll be able to, for those that are here at school, they'll be able to go out there and do the wall. And they do have hand sanitizer and all that stuff for in between, and they, they, they do the bleach spray and all that stuff. Uh, but there will be a waiver you have to sign. So for those that are at home, uh, there's a chance if they can arrange a ride, they could come meet us out there in the parking lot um, to be able to participate in that activity. It's, it's a bit of an adventure training thing. You know, there's in JRTC, should you choose to become a cadet, there's certain things you can do that are considered adventure activities. So like zip lining, rappelling, some of the things that we do at our summer camp. And there may be some opportunities during the school year. This will be one next week already uh, for doing the rock wall, should you want to try, you know, there's easy, moderate, and difficult. You different sides of the wall. You climb up to the top. You hit the buzzer at the very top of the wall. Uh, and if you if you do it, manage to hit the buzzer, you get. I think they usually have like some t-shirts or water bottles, stuff like that there. So short, you know, brief little prize. But again, it's all about the fun, the challenge to yourself. Um, I still get hit, a little bit scared of heights. I'm airborne qualified, air assault qualified, all that good stuff, and. Uh, I still do not enjoy being up high. So it's overcoming some of those fears and doing it anyway. And you guys that are here, you'll see me up there. I'm all, I'll climb the wall. I'll, I'll even try the difficult side. I made it last year once. Uh, so we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> a little bit of welcome to JRTC. We've already gone over some things, talked through a few things. Some of the things you'll learn in here that you can apply in the real world, uh, you'll learn through our, our service projects, for example. Uh, last year, we got started on our uh, Veterans of Valley High Memorial Project that's now out in front of the school. You see the service flags. It was our cadets and some of you that actually came out already last year were involved in that process, digging the foundation, pouring the footer, doing the concrete, building the forms, and then building the forms for the pillars, so there's carpentry, there's math, there was a uh, little bit chemistry, you know, learning how to do concrete. Uh, and then the final product of where we're at, and we will try to finalize that for Veterans Day. That's our goal this year uh, since things got put on hold last year and we did not finish in time for Memorial Day like our original plan. Uh, so we'll modify a little bit, we'll adjust, and we'll still be able to make that all happen. Okay. Um, that number is a little bit dated. There's the number of schools, it is still over 1,700 schools that have Army JRTC, but there's more than 400,000 cadets across the country. Uh, last year, the count was 416,000. So that's, that's a huge number of 
cadets uh, doing this program. Okay, we have the classroom portion, and again, we talked earlier about participating student versus cadet. Uh, participating student, you do the classroom portion, you're a little bit limited on some of the extra activities that you can do, but the Army provides certain equipment and uniforms for additional things. Uh, talk about the, the J-Lab, that one you have to be a full-blown cadet, because uh, that one is, there's academic and leadership competitions that we do online, two, two separate competitions. And if we make it all the way to round three, that wins us a trip to Washington, D.C. in June for a, for a nat national level competition. You know, our brigade consists of Pennsylvania over to New Jersey and then all the way up to Maine and then a couple schools that are in Italy and Germany that we compete with um, 248 schools within our brigade. Uh, we made it through round two last year at both levels. Uh, we, did, we almost made it to round three with our academic team. Okay, Raider Challenge, that one's very physically focused, uh, working as a team. There's a, <clears throat> there's a fi fitness test they do right up front. There's the, um, what do they call it? The, well, there's the rope bridge. You actually work as a team to construct a rope bridge to cross an obstacle across the stream without anybody getting wet other than the first and last person. They're the ones that have to actually go through. Um, there's a cross-country rescue where you have to demonstrate first aid tasks and then you have to carry a simulated casualty, uh, you know, a little crash test dummy, over a course at Slippery Rock University, over a five kilometer course uh, through the woods to get it through to the, the aid station. Uh, and then there's the gauntlet, which is a very steep hill that again, you carry as a team of eight, you carry four rucksacks and you have to cover a mile and a half uh, in the fastest time possible. There's drill competitions. That's done in the full Class A uniform, as you can see in the picture. Uh, we have air rifle, three-position air rifle. It is an NCAA uh, college-level sport that you can even earn scholarships to. When I was teaching at West Virginia University, uh, we had a number of cadets that were on the, the, the rifle team there, the air rifle team, and they competed nationally, won several titles. And uh, a couple of years after I left there uh, for the 2016 Olympics, Ginny Thrasher, Young lady there's, a, I think, a sophomore, sophomore junior in um, the rifle team there. She was the first gold medal winner at the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. So three-position air rifle, it's, it is something we do right here in the school. It's also, you know, it's a both, both college-level and Olympic-level sport. Um, STEM, for, let me see if I can jump out of this for a second. Go to scene here. Um, we have robot robots, um, robotics kits. So we have a robotics team right here in JRTC that we do in conjunction with the gifted program. So, okay. Let me jump back to that. Um, and orienteering. That's another team we do have where you go out with a map and a compass to one of the state parks in the area, and we do that through Western Pennsylvania Orienteering Club. That's the one thing that people are able to do uh, that both participating student and cadets are able to go do because there's no military equipment involved in that one. Okay, a little bit of the history, National Defense Act of 1916. JRTC uh, was originally just Army, eventually opened up to the other services. So National Defense Act. Who, who passes laws in our country? The Not the president. Congress. Congress. There you go. So Congress being both the Senate and the, the House of Representatives. So that's the, the legislative branch of government. Uh, when you're talking president, that's the executive. They're the ones that implement the laws passed by Congress, the legislative branch. And then, then what's the third branch of government? No, that's part of the executive. Where does the Supreme Court fall? In all the federal courts. Yeah, I think yeah. Mr. D'Antonio teaches it. It's judicial, the judicial branch. Okay, so there's executive, legislative, and judicial. Okay. 
Um, talk about outcomes. We do emphasize values. You know, what are American values? Do we have any codified values as a country? Not really. We have different elements, things that fall in, but that's sometimes we, we struggle with that. For purposes of junior ROTC, we're going to use Army values. Um, so there we're talking about loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. So just seven values. We'll get into that more later. But some of those things that help should help you with your the way you approach life. Take care of yourself. The respect is not just for others. It's also for yourself. Take care of yourself. Okay. Uh, we will do civic and social concerns in the community. Um, next week, we're going to be providing color guard at the football game. There's going to be some other activities. We already had the Salvation Army contact us about some things that, that we can do for them and that they can do for us. So there's going to be some other things in the community. For graduation, you are expected to do a certain number of service hours. Uh, in the past, we would do more service things here at the school, but because of coronavirus, that's much more limited. Um, we are looking at how do we do that for this year. Uh, each let level is required to do a certain number. That's the students, the, the new to JRTC or let one, leadership education and training level one. Uh, I think you're supposed to do 24 service hours over the course of the year, okay? Uh, some of that, uh, somebody, I think, Rainy, you were telling me you were already doing things with your church at the Need Cafe right here in New Kensington. You're already volunteering your time and doing some activities. Those are service hours, that sort of act thing that we can count towards that. Maybe, you know, hopefully by springtime, uh, when the school is doing a musical, we can, we provide ushers at the football games. In the past, we've helped out with parking, make sure that's all lined up and organized and safe uh, at Halloween. Um, assuming that we're still gonna do something this year, but we provide cadets that will be at intersections along with the police and uh, fire department, they're up there as well, but you'll have orange vests that we provide and flashlights, and you'll help get younger kids, you know, through the, the community, through the, the area for, for Halloween. Those are all service activities that we do right here in our own community. Okay, <clears throat> get you thinking about what to do after high school, post-secondary. You know, that's we, the CEW standards, the Career Education Workforce Standards for the state, we help um, teach that curriculum. That is, you know, it's embedded in the JRTC curriculum. We start getting you thinking about what it is you want to do when you leave here, because you will graduate at some point. Okay, so look at all the options, make an informed, intelligent decision on what it is you want to do, and you know, see how things go, see where what direction it goes. Maybe you want to branch off, try something different. Talk about positive social, emotional, and physical health. Obviously, yesterday's physical fitness PT. Lots of fun. Okay. Again, mission, we already hit this, to motivate young people to become better citizens. Remember that. That will be on the quiz. Challenges and opportunities. Um, again, we do talk values. That's, you know, you read through the slide there. Promote citizenship. Uh, talk about some other things. Help them take care of you. Take care of your community. That's the emphasis of all this. The others, be able to communicate it. Okay. Quiz real quick. The Army JRTC program began in 1916 when blank passed the National Defense Act. Congress. Congress. We just said that a few minutes ago. Good job. Okay. One of the outcomes of the Army JRTC program is for cadets to what? A, graduate high school with skills needed to excel in additional career education training. B, be prepared to defend our nation. Or C, appreciate the role of the Army in performing physical fitness exercises. What's the best answer? A, very good. Graduate high school with skills needed to excel in additional career and education training. Bingo. Okay. The blank of Army JRTC is to motivate young people to be better citizens. C, mission. Yep. All right. So we're, we're doing well. We're smoking here. All right. Um, think about what you can do with the information you've learned. Uh, hopefully you've been doing that as we're talking through this. Exercise one. All right, let me pull this up. Got to jump over here to OBS for the recording portion. And 
Let's pull this up. Uh, here's exercise one. Uh, this will be posted on the Teams page. Let's take a look at it. Uh, have you answer these questions as we do the video. Okay. So first one, JRTC is not about military. What is it about? What are three things at the core of JRTC? In addition to classroom instruction, what other JRTC activities are cadets allowed to participate in? Some of those we've already seen. So let's go ahead and watch the video. Maybe. There we go. Hopefully sound will come through for those that are viewing at home. about where we're at, where we're going, that they're an integral part of it, and they can make a difference for themselves, our community, and our nation. One single high school activity today is responsible for dramatically changing the lives of so many young people. Where are high school students learning valuable lessons in leadership, integrity, honesty, commitment, citizenship, and respect? And where are instructors using dynamic methods of teaching focusing on the way students learn and applying those skills in and out of the classroom? The answer, Army Junior ROTC. JROTC is about belonging, belonging to a diverse organization made up of students, instructors, and parents committed to excellence in teaching and learning skills that will last a lifetime. JROTC is not about joining the military, rather it's about doing your best and being recognized for it. Junior ROTC offers each cadet a chance to excel, an opportunity to participate, the prospect for success in and out of the classroom. What I like the most about it is that it, it teaches me dedication. It keeps me motivated in school, not only in just JROTC, because I mean, you have to be a leader, you have to stick out, you have you can't like live in your own comfort zone. You have to learn to step outside of the box. JROTC is a force in our communities, families, and schools, and there is no cost to enroll. At the core of the JROTC curriculum is the development of citizenship, leadership, academic excellence, and character development. Citizenship includes respect, honesty, and integrity. Leadership and teamwork skills help students develop character. As a result, Cadets often emerge as leaders in their classes and other school organizations. In addition to classroom instruction and activities, cadets also compete with other schools, perform ceremonial presentations, mentor and tutor other students in various grade levels, and are active in service to their communities. High school JROTC instructors are retired officers and non-commissioned officers who come from a wide array of experiences, locations, and specialties, thus adding to the diversity of the program. JROTC offers students a wide variety of experiences, whether they're interested in pursuing a career in the military or not. The opportunity to be part of a team, the opportunity to learn character, the opportunity to practice citizenship, those are all fundamental activities that JROTC offers for students, regardless of what their career choices may be, whether it's the military or civilian life. A common thread that runs through JROTC is the willingness to embrace improved learning and teaching techniques and strategies. JROTC is on the leading edge of new methods for preparing its cadets in this new century. Instructors use contemporary technologies and models to enhance their teaching, learning, and listening skills. The results are evident in the classroom. Students often see their grades improve in many of their regular classes due to a broadened perspective gained from their connection with JROTC. By the end of the first year, they are all above a 3.0. And it is not that I'm a great teacher. It's the curriculum and the structure that we put them through that makes them proud of who they are. 
when the kids walk into my class, right behind me, the first thing they'll see is uh, up on the board, it's not how smart I am, but it's how I am smart. And it's my responsibility to find that, to help them identify that, and then nurture that so we can bring out their talents. JROTC's curriculum includes a cross-section of subjects that support and amplify existing high school studies, including history, math, science, geography, civics, written and oral communications, and life and work skills. JROTC's only expectation of cadets is that they do their best, that they practice integrity with their peers, parents, teachers, and society, and that they participate in a spirit of willingness. From that grows a common goal among cadets, leadership excellence. JROTC has helped me in several ways. I'd say probably the biggest way it's helped me is learning to manage my time better. That has really helped, especially now that as we're getting older, we're taking more advanced classes with more and more demand. Managing your time becomes extremely important in high school, and not only high school, but later on in life. I'm, I'm an advocate for these kids because I think what we're seeing is really bright, innovative young people that have learned an entirely new style. And in fact, many of our best and brightest young people have learned, I would say, despite an old educational system that was really built for students 30 years ago and has been reluctant to change. So I'm, I'm really encouraged about the future because I think, I think what we're seeing is young people, the next generation, learning to teach themselves. I believe that the need for JRTC is paramount for our students in today's educational system. The opportunity they learn as JRTC students in character development, in leadership development, and preparation for college is a vital role that they serve in our students' education today. All right, so a quick little video there. Let's see if we can jump back. Here, jump back to our presentation. All right, well, let's keep it up on here. Okay. So, what are your thoughts from that video? What's that? Informational. It hit a lot of points I already talked about, but it helped uh, illustrate that a little bit better. Okay, uh, and, and it hit some things that I did not really talk about. The fact of it, the curriculum is being modernized and is actually on, is on the leading edge gets you to think. It's we're not trying to teach you what to think. This is not a geography class where uh, we quiz you on you know what was the capital of Italy in 1860. Uh, the, the focus here is going to be on learning how to think, how to express yourselves. For example, when we do the current events, the, there is a geography component. You, we want you to show where it took place, but we'll learn through that whole process of you picking a story that you're going to report on, whether it's local or, you know, wildfires out in California or, you know, the, well, the polar bear migration in Svalbard, Norway, above the Arctic Circle, whatever it is. You'll then show us on the map, get us there, and learn geography through that practical application. Okay. Uh, just a couple of reflection questions. Think about that. Okay. I think we have just enough time to go through the Cadet Creed. Um, it is built into stanzas, you know, single line. So, I am an Army Junior ROTC Cadet. I will always conduct myself to bring credit to my family, country, school, and the Corps of Cadets. Again, Corps meaning is a French word for body, the group, the body of cadets. I am loyal and patriotic. I am the future of the United States of America. I do not lie, cheat, or steal, and will always be accountable for my actions and deeds. I will always practice good citizenship and patriotism. I will work hard to improve my mind and strengthen my body. I will seek the mantle of leadership and stand prepared to uphold the Constitution and the American way of life. What is the mantle of leadership? That's the, the, the physical manifestation of that. The old mantle is, is over your shoulders, but it's to repli you know, represent that you are carrying that burden, that responsibility, the mantle of leadership, the responsibility of leadership. And then may God grant me the strength to always live by this creed. That's what we say we believe. That's the intent 
uh, of the program. It's to help remind you, live to those values, and do that. All right. Unfortunately, it looks like we are about out of time. So this will be the end of today's class. We'll pick up on this tomorrow following the creed, and uh, we'll have a little more discussion, and then we'll do the quiz on Friday. All right. For <clears throat> I'll post um, a couple things in the uh, on Teams for you, some of the additional resources for you to take a look at, uh, especially for those at home. And uh, otherwise, I want you to have a great day. Vikings.